what we're finding over and over again, just in today's group and throughout the, the whole years that people are in this, is that situations happen, even trained and, and wonderful parents that are trained and um, doing the right thing get flustered. They answer wrong. We discuss it. I explain why it's wrong. The parents say, wow, you're right. What do I do now? So first of all, we're going to address what should be your response so we don't make mistakes. And then we're going to say, what do we do when we already made a mistake? When you're trained in Atsala, you can't make a mistake. But we're human. But if you're really trained, you make less mistakes. The training has to be to understand that I do not need to respond to everything that comes out of left field right now. I need to do my job first. I can always go back a day, two, three, four, five later after speaking to me and saying, I, I, I want to talk about what you shared with me and answer. You don't have to answer. You should not answer. You should not answer, even if you have the right answer. Because your job is not to answer every question in this situation. Your job is to raise your child to a higher level of trust in you. And even if you have the right answer, when you say, wow, that's really interesting. I need to think about it. I want to get back to you. And you go back to them. They become so impressed with you. And really, I always tell you in group, when you ask me questions, each person, I should say, wow. That's a very, very deep and interesting question. Let me think about it and get back to you. And when I give you that answer, you'll appreciate me much more than spitting out answers. I just can't do it when we have so many people that need answers now. But any smart person that has an answer and wants the person to trust them should say, you know, great question. Give me a couple of days. Because you, the questioner, will have much more faith in their answer then if whatever it is that they throw at you, they go, blah, 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 they give you an answer. Number one, that's assuming your answer is right. But we have parents who are answering all types of questions wrong. We have parents who think that they're trauma experts and um, uh, life coaches, and, and they're just giving whatever answer as if it's not a pikuach nefesh situation or a dangerous situation. And even with regular healthy kids, how do you know everything? My kids will tell you that I very rarely in their lifetime give advice. I have kids. They've gone through elementary school problems, camp problems, high school problems, post-high school problems, dating problems. And you'll ask them. I always tell them. I hook them up with very smart people. And I always say, oh, this sounds like a question. Who are you going to ask? And I'm somebody that people from all over the world come to ask me advice. And even on the same topic, I'll tell them, okay, so who are we going to ask? Because I want them to go to either their Rosh Hashiva, who they're close to, or, or a smart person, a wise man. I try to surround them with people to go to. And I've told them often, you have a question? I don't want to say names, but certain Rabbanim who are just wise. You have a problem? You have a question? He's very wise. He helps a lot of people. Once in a while, if they'll ask me, I'll say, wow. I, I really appreciate that you asked me. And then I'll think to myself, am I an expert in this? Because if there's someone who's an expert in this sugya, in this question, this category, why should I answer it? Why are parents constantly giving their kids the short end of the stick by trying to answer every question that the kid comes up with? Where to move, who to marry, your dating coach? I don't think you should. I think you should. You're talking about your kid's life. Find, find a professional. So when I had a child who was going through dating and had a question, I did not get involved. I had an opinion just like everybody else, but it wasn't a professional, experienced, expert opinion. So I said, wow, this is your life. Let's find a top expert in the field of dating. Let's figure out what to do. I did not try to answer all their questions. And, I, and I'm, I'm sitting there around people and I see their kids come over and they're answering, bloop, 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 bloop. They know everything. Well, I'm like, wow, you know, every, you're an expert on everything that you're willing to advise your kids on whatever comes up. I never do it. I never did it. I, I, I think it's posh, but if not, maybe just be humble. And think about it. Why did I just advise my kid what to do with this problem and that problem? 
I don't know. I feel like I'm not an expert in any other field except for this. So I don't know why people give advice. But if you do, the kid has to ask you for advice. I was once with one of my kids, and I really had good advice for them. And they were telling me, I don't know what to do about this and that. And then, and, you know, I thought about this and I thought about that. And I couldn't hold myself back. So I said, um, do you want to ask me? And they'll be like, do I want to ask you what? I'm like, do you want to ask me? I'm like, what? I'm like, you know, I'll never give you advice if you don't ask me. Do you want to ask me advice? <laughs> so finally, they're like, yeah, what's your opinion? I'm like, well, it's so nice of you to ask. Now that you asked, I'll tell you my opinion. It's very, very weird, but it was, was something that I really had an opinion that I felt I was entitled to. And still, I wouldn't do it until he asked. And most of the time, they don't ask. And most of the time, I don't give it. They're not sure where to move. They're not sure whether to go into business or should they learn? Should they move here? Should they, My son asked me, should he go to Israel to learn now? Should he not go to I don't know. I'm not an expert in, in anything. So find someone who is. And I'll pay the bill if there's a bill. I'll go with you for support. I'll back you whatever you decide to do. I'll give you a, a dad who fully supports your decision, whether my little mind agrees or not. I'm not an expert in the field. If you're asking me about the one field where I happen to be an expert, okay. So let's say you're a plumber and your kid has a plumbing problem and says, could you tell me what to do? Then you can give advice. But if they call you up, don't start giving advice. You're not an expert. Unless you happen to be an expert in the field and even then don't give advice. So the first thing is, when your kids come, and, and this is a common thing, there's so much that you can do to raise NKN. You have such a big job to sit with them. When, when I have a, a, a problem and a question, I'm thinking about it, and I go to someone and they give me bloop, 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 right away an answer, it makes me feel stupid. You, you're making them feel, first of all, most of the time your answers are wrong. But you make them feel stupid, like, these are smart kids. To them, this is a big deal. I don't know if I should do this or do that. And to you, maybe it's Pasha. Don't answer them right away. Never answer anybody right away, even if they ask you for advice. Say, let me think about it. That makes them feel smart. That, wow, my question, the reason I'm stuck is because I'm smart and I'm stuck. My parents don't have the answer. My father's so smart. And it shows them that you're much of their problem. It also gives you time to ask me what you should answer instead of just throwing something out and then saying, oh, what do I do now? So the first thing is, and it's happened just on group tonight, multiple times, it happens constantly. Be trained like Hatzala. You don't give advice. You listen to their problem. To you, it's not a problem. If you listen to a second grader's problems, it's not a problem to you. Because to you, it's not a really big deal to give your extra nash that you got on some kustari to your friend because you don't care about the nash but to them it's a big problem should i give an extra lollipop away should i give an a kleine kinder kleine tzuris? small kids small problems big kids big problems a lot of times you don't have the sympathy and empathy for what what they're going through so you tell them that nah, just go just come just give just that but to them it, in their mindset these things are very very important and you just show them it's not important just do it it doesn't build character it doesn't bring them to understand what to do. It doesn't show them, because when it comes to you and something you care about, you don't do that. It's just that you don't really care about their small issues. So you're like, yeah, just give in, just sleep there. It doesn't have that. Don't worry about it. Gamzu Lutayva, all these things. Do they see you doing that? And if they do, then you don't have to tell them because they'll learn from you. So the first thing is, you say, wow, that's, that's a real problem. Sympathy, empathy. Wow, that's, that's really tough. That is a very tough, tough place to be. I, I'm sorry going through this. And then after pausing and thinking and giving them space to feel good that I shared with you, I want them to feel comfortable to share with me. Because there's a lot more things in this onion, layers of the onion, that they want to share with you. And if you don't get this right, they're not going to share the real important stuff. Don't give any throwaway lines. Don't you say anything. Just that's a real issue. Wow, I could see why you're why you're up at night. I could see why that.